Yes, and I am very happy to show that the media are interested by the message about today's technologies, about new energies. Uh, this is footage from just about a half an hour ago. The voice you hear is that of pilot Bertrand Picard, one of two pilots navigating the first ever solar-powered flight around the world. Pretty cool. The Solar Impulse 2 completed its first leg yesterday to Oman, and it's currently in the air, finishing the second leg set to land in um Ahmedabad. I hope I'm saying this right. Ahmedabad, India. Sounds good to me. Does it sound good to you? Uh, okay, we, good. we know that there are some challenges ahead. The longest leg will be nonstop for five days crossing the Pacific Ocean from China to Hawaii. So what might we see? Let's uh, go in depth on this and turn to Dick Rutan, who piloted the 1986 Voyager aircraft that flew uh, around the world nonstop without refueling. Uh, he received a presidential citation for his uh, efforts. Dick, it is so great to have you here via telephone. Well, great. It's uh, great to be here. So and being involved in uh, global flight again. Yeah, this whole solar-powered craft. Uh, what do you know about it, and what do you think of the crew? Well, it's pretty amazing. You know, if you think back, it was uh, 90 years since the, uh, the first round-the-world flight. And then, of course, it's almost 30 years since I did it with uh, with gasoline or aviation fuel. But, you know, it's it's really neat to go around the world, and it's amazing. Uh, I, I remember sitting there for the nine days we did it nonstop, and it was, you put W in the compass, you know, west, and the sun comes up and the sun goes down, and then without turning around, you're back home again. It's amazing. To, to put it in perspective... How unusual is this? I mean, without a single drop of jet fuel, they're doing this. Oh, that's great. To be able to collect the energy from the sun. You know, the sun's been beating up on us for a millennium. Now it's our turn to use some of that to do something useful, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, Dick, when you guys flew around the world nonstop, using, I guess, a, a, I guess it was a, a conventional jet fuel, I'm, I'm just kind of curious the weight of these vehicles and and uh, turbulence and everything how sound are crafts like the voyager you flew and like this solar plane this crew is flying well i'm not intimately uh knowledgeable about the structure of the airplane but uh, uh our airplane it was a big long wing airplane you know wingspan of an airliner and so forth but it was very frail because instead of the safety structure we had to use that for fuel and, um, you know, 75% of the weight was fuel. Uh, and this airplane is a very long, uh, fragile airplane also. So uh, to be able to fly in good weather and get sun all the time and then avoid some real bad weather that would, just like my Voyager, would probably uh, would do damage to the airplane. How risky would you say this is? Well, they have a good hack on the weather. Stay out of the vicious weather. See, Weather tears up big airplanes, too, so uh, these airplanes, these long-range airplanes are generally more frail, so they have to be very careful of that. Uh, as a non-pilot, Dick, a, a guy who's flown, uh, been a passenger on commercial jetliners, but then I took a lot of small planes around Arizona when I was representing that state in Congress. The turbulence and stuff at the lower levels, the heat thermals and stuff, you really got a jolt. So I'm just curious on Voyager and perhaps on this plane, is is that threat of turbulence a, a real um, a real problem? Well, I would think so. Uh, we had a huge problem with uh, turbulence and any kind of, of upsets. Uh, the controllability of the airplane was very marginal. In fact, I ran into a little thunderstorm, uh, small one, out in the Pacific at night, and I didn't see it. And I saw the airplane bank uh, 90 degrees. Frankly, when I saw us rolling 90 degrees, I thought, well, I wonder where this was going to end. And it was, it was well, it's going to end right here, and nobody will ever know what happened. Wow. But uh, the weather and the winds, especially with an airplane that goes that slow, uh, to be that efficient. So, Dick, so, we have to ask you, we only have a few seconds. Uh, is this the future of aviation? Say again? Is this the future of aviation? Oh, oh yeah, we're looking at that, the development of batteries. 
uh, when they can probably do this as much with a battery or electricity that we can with fossil fuels now, it's going to be a game changer. It's going to change everything. It's going to have a major impact on uh, everybody's life. And, uh, yeah, I wish all the best for Bertram and his pilot. This is really, really neat. And I want to thank him for it. And we want to thank you, Dick Rutan, for your time and your insights. We're coming right back.